in 14 years of doing this show, one of the things I've always tried to champion are chef-driven restaurants. And by that I mean restaurants that are owned or operated by chefs that are in the kitchen all day long. They really care about service. That's what they love to do versus all of the other types of restaurants, the chains and the whatnots. Um, today's an example of that. Two restaurants in my old neighborhood, the West Village. Restaurant number one is The Clam. Joey Campanero and Mike Price, they've got a couple of restaurants together in the village, great seasoned New York chefs, and they love to cook. They're in the kitchen all the time. You'll see the burn marks, they sweat, they're there. Second restaurant is Loro. David Santos, I don't think this guy does anything but eat, sleep, and dream about food and cooking. He pickles, preserves, smokes, dries, salt cures, you name it. His restaurant's great. Both these restaurants are great. So West Village, two restaurants, very much in the vein that I love, chef-driven. That's the theme today. Stay tuned. I'm Mike Colomeco, Industry Insider. I've been in the business my whole life, and I know what it takes to succeed. Each week, we'll take you into real kitchens, filmed in real time. Backstage passes to a day in the life of chefs, restaurateurs, and their teams. The competition's fierce. Careers, life savings, and reputations hang in the balance. These are my people, and this is their passion. And that's what's next on Mike Colomeco's Real Food. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home. Lou's Naturals Family of Brands offers all-natural, minimally processed meats, free of antibiotics, hormones, and nitrites, from our family to yours. Imported from Italy, Anna Pasta is made from 100% Italian Durham wheat semolina and pure spring water, slowly dried to cook al dente. Recipes online at Cento.com. Order steam little neck. Joey Campanero and Mike Price have worked together for years as co-owners of the Market Table at the corner of Carmine and Bedford. Here they found another sweet West Village corner spot at Hudson and Leroy, where they celebrate the humble undersung culinary gem, the clam, with a menu that showcases the bivalve and all that can be done with it. When you have a restaurant called the clam, clams are featured prominently. This is a big old honking deli of shuck clams and they just smell like the ocean, man. I mean, these are steamers out of the shell, shuck. These are no joke. And it is the biggest off the menu item that I sell because there's such a high demand for it. People love it. All right, let's do this. Why the clam, why this restaurant, why the name, what was the concept? We just kind of felt like clams have never had their day. I mean, there's an oyster restaurant, there's a, a crab restaurant, there's Everybody's got lobster, lobster rolls, rolls. you know, there's, they're relatively inexpensive compared to a lot of seafood dishes. They're unbelievably sustainable yeah. uh, because it doesn't take a lot for them to survive or grow and they actually actually benefit the environment. And all the stuff I'm getting is from Long Island, hand-raked, wild stuff, and it's the best you can get. This is a uh, little brioche slider rolls, and we're gonna brush them with a, just a little bit of melted butter, and we're gonna toast them on the plancha. I know of five or six different names of it. It's called a belly clam, it's called a soft shell clam, it's called a steamer, right. it's called a mano, where I'm from in Maryland. And they're one of the most flavorful fried clams of any kind of clam because there's so much fat in the belly. My favorite clam. We're gonna add a little bit of buttermilk to that. Just give it a little bit of a mix. And we're gonna go into a seasoned flour. This is corn flour. You just add a little bit of buttermilk and the seasoned flour and it'll stick to the clam. You don't need to do that flour, egg wash, breadcrumb thing. We're gonna go ahead and drain off the excess flour and we're gonna go ahead and fry those up. And this is one of those things you really want to be careful on the salt. Clams are salty, they're naturally salty. They come from the ocean, big surprise. So when they're coming out, just a pinch of salt, doesn't take a lot. Like I said, that little pinch of salt, and that's what we're talking about, a fried belly clam. You got the belly fried, you got that outer part fried. Wonderful. Yum. And we've got a nice, hunky mayonnaise base, but not a lot of mayonnaise, a lot of lemon juice, lobster salad. You got your nice fried clams on top, and the only way to hold this thing together is with a skewer. <laughs> Fried belly clams. There is no pretty way to do this. That is so good. Think about it, Mike. 
a clam is every chef's favorite ingredient. I mean, it's low in fat, right? It's high in protein, it's tons of flavor. Sustainable. Sustainable. Local. Doesn't cost a lot of money, right. and you don't have to do much to it to make it taste great. And then you can also really offer some classics. But then also, you can also offer some twists on those classics, and that's something that Mike Price is really great at. Uh, so we're making a corn and clam chowder. What's the stock? Some kitchens, the base is chicken stock. Some kitchens, the base is veal stock. Here at the clam, you guessed it, the base is clam stock. Uh, so we make it with big quahogs, hogs, surf clams. Those clams that come from the deep ocean that are like this big. Like that big, a lot yeah. less sandy to it, so you don't really get as much dirt in the, in the stock. Uh, and this is with thyme, garlic, white mirepoix. Sweat them open. Sweat them open. All that clam juice comes out. Lots of white wine and Cape May clam juice. We're gonna to toast just a little bit of garlic here. Not too much. I always like a little nub of garlic in there with the butter. Makes it brown nice and even. A little bit of bacon, and we're gonna add our Bacon, clams. clams, lid, wine. A little bit of white wine. Gonna open those up. And then a little bit of that stock I was talking about. So then we uh, put a little cover on it. We're gonna Steam. let those clams open up. Uh, I learned a few things about clams opening up the clam. <laughs> One, they take a long time to open. And two, they're really heavy. I get bigs and they're bigs. And they're 150 bigs in a bag is wrap it around your hands, five gallon bucket full of water heavy. All right, now Bingo. we got our opened up clams and we're gonna add some vegetables to it. We got a little Leak. sweated out leeks. Nice diced, diced potatoes. Diced blanched potatoes. We got a little bit of roasted corn. And then we got our chowder base. Uh, this is a chowder base made from clam stock, uh, white mirepoix, thyme, vegetables, a little bit of Yukon gold potatoes, pureed and then passed. So there's no flour, no roux, just nice creamy clam flavor. With all the gluten allergies and everything that's going on this day, everybody can have the chowder. A little bit of chopped parsley right at the end. And Chop clams right at the end. You just want to make sure that they're hot. That's about it. You know, here at the clam, you know, we like to double down a lot. And by that, I mean we put whole clams in and we also put chopped clams in. So there we go. So I like to just go ahead and put the clams right in the plate, stack them up a little bit, and then we put our chowder right on top. Nice and hot, nice and full of vegetables. I love chowder. I make chowder. Chowder's not so easy to do. This is one of my favorite chowders ever, ever, ever. Clammy as can be. It smells like clams. Ah. Bingo. That's a peaky toe crab cake. It's served with a Savoy cabbage slaw and it's got a tomato cayenne butter underneath of it. It's all about the butter on the bottom. Did you guys work together how many years ago? Symphony Cafe, Garmage, what? Yeah, it was uh, 20 years ago. Then you crossed paths again at the Harrison, Jimmy Bradley, that great opening. We kept in touch over the years. Uh, we just weren't in the same city. When I had an opportunity to come back as the chef at the Harrison, I immediately called Mike Price and said, hey, let's open a restaurant together for Jim Bradley. Yeah, it was the, the first restaurant to open in Tribeca after 9-11, yeah. and that's where we really came back together and started cooking again. Mike started looking for a spot, and he wanted to do another restaurant, and I was mm. flattered that he asked me to be a part of it with him. Um, he could have done it on his own, and he asked me to come on board, and you know that's 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 a testament to good partnership. And the landlord here approached Mike and said, we "Love what you did with Market Table. Why don't you take this space?" We decided to open up something where it's very uh, Atlantic Seaboard, and decided to have some fun with it. But we didn't want to make it a shack, so you know we went some some higher end finishes. We got a, a beautiful mother of pearl tile ceiling. We put in a nice marble bar and we have tablecloths and the clam is a quarter spot in the West Village. It's, yes. This is corner spots in New York are, gold. they mean something. This is our clam dip, but as you can see, it's all clam. What's in that? Uh, sour cream, Worcestershire, lemon juice, cayenne, Tabasco, chopped chives, and a ton of clams. It's half clams to half mix. The main ingredient is clams. I mean, it's a brilliant ingredient to be pairing with food-wise. Um, there's so much you can do with it. And who knows how to make wine for this ingredient better than people that live on island. And I focused a lot on the, uh, the Canary Islands. The wines <laughs> Which is are, insane. Are it's windy, it's volcanic. It's like five or six islands are all volcanic. Yeah. The soil is, is 
deeply volcanic, so you get this wonderful smoky minerality to the wine. It's heroic winemaking at, 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 at its best. I mean, there's no reason why they should be able to right. grow wine. And the wines they produce are I mean, culturally very rich, and um, the, 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 the palate that it brings to the table, especially with clams, is so dynamic, it's not even funny. This producer, Los Bermejos, one of the top producers coming out of Canary, they use these great, traditionally these great old bottles that they reused olive oil bottles from because the culture was very, very poor. They had to kind of use what they had. I remember getting this thing and there's this little lip over here and I'm like, is this gonna, how do I even open this Isn't thing? Isn't that cool? So Diego Seco, it's, it's, it's bright in the fruit, mm. pineapple, Meyer lemon, the acidity is vibrant. Um, and you get that wonderful kind of smoky, you actually chalky, smoke. Vo volcanic, the volcanic unmistakable. finish that plays so well with the brininess of the clams. Absolutely delicious. Yeah. You yeah. just want to put some clams in your mouth, right? Absolutely. Yeah, this with, with Mike's steamed little necks, uh, it's, it's a match made in heaven. That's a white clam pizza with pickled hot cherry peppers and whipped ricotta. Come over here, I'm looking at Parker House Rolls in-house. I mean, you could buy bread from anybody, but you're actually doing this in-house. Yeah, I mean, at the other restaurants, we serve, you know, a rustic bread with olive oil. So here I wanted to do a nice, warm, savory bread with butter. We heat them up, serve them warm, toasted, little brush more of butter. Oh. I mean, please. I get more comments about the warm bread than a lot of things. Another wine that we have a lot of fun with here, a varietal called Negra Mold. And, um, the producer Juan Matias Torres off the island of La Palma, which is one of the larger DOs in Canary. Um, great producer, have a couple of his wines. I always pour this for um, Burgundy drinkers, people that like oh, kind of that, a, a that lighter weight. bodied wine, right, right. But, but like earth, like herbaceousness, like spice, has that kind of like rich complexion. You can taste the soil in the wine. Taste the soil, it's good, little notes of crushed black pepper. I mean, it's delicious wine. This is a spaghetti and clams with a salad on top. Um, this is one of those old tricks that I learned from Jimmy Bradley. He's one of the guys who's old school, has a red cat, Harrison, great guy. This is one of those tricks that's something special. So we got a nice hot pan here. We definitely want to see this puppy smoke when we put the oil in. A little bit of garlic. It's not going to take long for that to toast. And we're going to put a nice ladle of chopped canned plum tomatoes. You can definitely hear that smoke. You can see that's a hot pan. Look at that. We're gonna hit that soy sauce right on the hot pan. Soy sauce, man. That's really interesting. We're gonna put a little nub of butter and a nice spoon of chili flakes. I like to use a spoon. To measure. <laughs> well, not just that. You get it on your fingers and you walk around and you touch your face and all of a sudden you, you know, it's a hot kitchen. You're burning up. And then we got our our fresh pasta. We cut this downstairs every day. Uh, that's probably looks like a good shot. Go ahead and drop that into the water. And then while that pasta is cooking, we're going to get our stuff together for the salad on top. We got a little bit of fresh arugula. Sometimes I use peppercress. I like a little bit of a spice to the green. Just a little bit of lemon juice and just a drizzle of olive oil. And what's with the salad on top of the pasta? Where'd that come from? You know, when I used to eat the family meal, I would mix the pasta into the salad just because I liked the lemony dressing. It would cut it up a little bit and kind of add that citrusness to you know, a relatively heavy dish. Mm. So I kind of like that kind of acid in it. And I decided to put a salad right on top of the pasta. It's so funny, when I was growing up, we'd always have Sunday dinners at my grandma's house. My mom's mom, great Italian chef. And a lot of times, to make life simple, we'd have something with tomato sauce, and then we'd put the salads. So to this day, I like eating my salad after dinner if I have pasta in that plate right. with a vinaigrette mixes in with the tomato, tomato sauce. sauce right. Somehow that's like a flavor, <laughs> like, like reminds me of home. Sounds good. Sounds real good. Uh, we're going to add a little bit of clams, chopped clams to the sauce. We're going to add a little bit of whole clams to the sauce. Our pasta should be coming together nice. Yeah, fresh pasta cooks fast. Let's see what we got here. Feels good. A little bit right on top. Then we're going to plate it up. Just want to make sure you give it a good toss. Make sure you get some uh, oh, sauce tomato in sauce in with the pasta. All right. right into the middle of the plate. Go ahead and dock our clams right around. A little bit of the sauce right on top. And then we're going to finish it up with our <laughs> lemon salad. Inspired by family meal at restaurants. I love you guys. It, it's a, it's, it's one of those things where I've been, I've, I've spent months perfecting mm. it, 
um, mm -hmm. with this pasta and with the clams and you know because every dish is different but people really seem to like it a lot. And the salad genius man I'm not kidding. Back to my grandmom's day to this day still I love doing salad on top of a used tomato sauce plate. Mm. This is a herring that runs off the coast of Jersey in the winter. Yeah. So they come into the rivers to spawn. They're really, really super plentiful. And so we did a bunch of different dishes with them, but it smells like dashi. Smoke? Pretty intense. Smoke, smoke herring, you know? fishy. What can I tell you about David Santos? Simply put, he's a chef's chef. In the years I've known him, I can say with 100% confidence that all this guy wants to do 24-7 is cook, cook some more, or think about what he's gonna cook next. Nice rare duck breast. Yeah. It's almost like a, it turns into like a shabu shabu almost. Yeah, yeah it's gonna cook in the broth. Exactly. We smoke the grapes first. We cook them with a little bit of vinegar, run them through the ricer, and take that, marry it with a little smooth Dijon, and a little whole grain mustard. You kind of smell it, it's got that kind of nice it little Sounds smoke. like smoked conquered <laughs> grapes. You make uh, this in house? Yeah. This so it's like our, a Pullman loaf. Yeah, it's our uh, sourdough rye bread. It smells like rye. Uh, we're just gonna toast this. It's kind of a deconstructed sandwich, if you will. This is a Kobe beef tongue. We actually corn it first okay, for so uh, two days. Salt, pickling spices, a tiny bit of vinegar in it, and water. And it's like a brine, you know? Right. And it's Kobe beef. Yeah, it's Co this is Kobe beef. This is why it's so fatty. So we make our own dill pickles. Pickle juice. Yeah. So we took the pickle juice and we uh, put these onions on there. So they're gonna have crunch and acid. Exactly. Because the meat's really rich. Really rich. You need a foil for yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. I mean, you're doing an in-house bread program. You do all your own pickles. You cure your own meat. You smoke your own food. I'm like, does this guy just <laughs> sleep ever? I mean. No, the answer is no, <laughs> not at all. That's it. Beautiful, man. Mm -hmm. I'm going right for the meaty part yeah. first. Tender. Tongue's it's, like butter. It's so tender. It's so, so good. good. Uh, I'm dyslexic, so I, I, you know, I don't read very well. Over the years, I think my brain has kind of developed its own technique of like experimentation and like I see things on TV or I see things around me and that's how I kind of look for inspiration. So that actually translates into my brain and actually makes my brain like super active and I actually have a lot of trouble sleeping at night. That's the monkfish. It's one of the sloppiest fish to clean. I love the flavor. Absolutely love the flavor. So this is a chorizo ragu, like a, almost like a cassoulet. Monkfish mm. goes right over the top. Sweet. Parsley to finish. We love doing surf and turf dishes in Portugal. We always mix meat and fish a lot. Uh, and I wanted to do a really fun pasta dish that did that. Um, so the whole time I was thinking about the idea of bolognese. Which is super heavy meat ragu. Right. So I was like, what can I do that will replicate meat and not be meat? What fish will do that? Uh, and so the idea came to me about octopus. We actually take a large eight to 12 pound octopus, Portuguese octopus, and treat it exactly as you would traditional bolognese. The surf and turf element comes in the form of wild boar belly pancetta that we make here. Just a nice drop of Aleppo pepper in there. Then we take our Bolognese. Bolognese. Okay. And then touch of heavy cream. Touch of heavy cream. You gotta have dairy in there. It's bolognese. Take our fresh pasta. We make it and then dry it. It's our tagliatelle. Drop it in our water. It's nice and al dente. Drop it right in there. Finish it on the stove. Yeah. So we're just gonna take our uh, our pasta. Put a little twirl. Gonna take the ragu. Just go right over the top. And then we take our normal Parmesan cheese, just to give it a little finishing umami yeah, cheese Parmesan quality. Parmesan will be nice because you got cream in there. Exactly. The dish you can't take off the menu. <laughs> I thought I was going to be able to take it off for uh, the summer. Because it's heavy and it's people heavy wouldn't, and no, people still uh, come for people, it, they don't care. Like, they, they just wanted it, like no matter what, they just wanted it. It tastes like the ocean. It does, it really does, it tastes like the ocean. How would you describe the food if you feel like it, so people can get a sense of what's going on? I always kind of think about myself as a, like 
and the food as the, you know, the great age of like Portuguese exploration. I would call it New York, New American because it's very melting pot style. Mm -hmm. But in truth, I think it's about the exploration of cuisine. You know, you look at our menu and we have dishes that are inspired by Colombia, India, you know, all across Europe. So this is our heirloom potato salad. How cool is this? Most of these are confit, some are roasted. Okay. Kennebec, uh, finger wing, uh, banana ordering, finger wings. I, I am ordering that. That is so me. <laughs> the most important thing in food is technique, knowing how to do something. If you have good, proper technique, you can make anything. And from there, you draw, pull flavors from everywhere and you use them to your advantage because you know how to cook. And it gets drizzled with a little bit of the uh, butter. butter. Not too much, just a little bit. That's good. So what, how's that being served? Like as is for a As table? is. So for this dish, this is actually inspired by um, Colombia. They do a lot of braises, fish braises on the coast in Colombia. And this is what this is. So we make a uh, coriander coconut broth. It's made with uh, the bones of the striped bass, toasted coriander, toasted cumin, coconut milk, onions, garlic, really flavorful, really flavorful. We take these little Korean hot pots that we have. So we're gonna add our fish and we're gonna drop it skin side down, cover it up, up on the shelf here. That sits there for about 10 minutes. 15 minutes? Yeah. I'm guessing it's cooked. Yeah, it's, it'll be perfect now. Look That's at that, perfect. look at the protein. You know, you think about what they eat in Colombia uh, with this dish. Typically, it's uh, rice and uh, yuca or potatoes. So we take a nice big ball of rice. Uh, and then we have little fried yuca pieces. There. And then we take everything and we put a little salsa verde. Uh, cilantro, salsa verde. cilantro, scallions, garlic, a little parsley as well, and uh, olive oil. And it's a nice dollop of salsa there, there, right it's over a flavor the flavor bomb right there. Yeah. Then we just cover it up like that. So then we just bring it over to our little safety bottom. And then we serve, put it in front of our guests. We just take it open. Steams, flavors start coming. Gorgeous. Right into your nose. Beautiful. That's it. You don't mind if I just go in here and mash Absolutely. all this stuff. I don't just see it. You don't want to eat thing. this by itself. No, no, you want to you mix want it, it to, all right, in there. Yeah, become a exactly. component. Those fish is like custard, yeah. man. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So when, when did you get into cooking? Why did you get into cooking? Where did this bug start? Uh, I mean, it really kind of started at home. You know, my family just immersed uh, in food, um, mostly because they grew up very poor <laughs> in Portugal. Well, it wasn't a lot of money going around, so, you know, there's a lot of raising your own uh, animals to eat. DIY or, for exactly, a reason. <laughs> exactly. So when they came over to the States, uh, they brought that with them because that's what they knew. We wanted to do a kimchi, but we wanted to do one that was very Laura. First and foremost, we make it Portuguese, okay? So instead of starting it with like Napa cabbage and like, you know, Korean chilies, we start it with onions, garlic, kale, uh, collard greens, um, roasted peppers, lots and lots of black pepper, and lots and lots of piri piri pepper. So it's spicy, salty, of course, you know. It's kimchi. Uh, it's kimchi. But, um, so what we've done, that was our... <laughs> yeah. Woo! <laughs> My eyes are watering. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got a little oil down. Just simple sticky rice. Who doesn't like so, rice? I know, exactly. Get the kimchi in there. All right, nice and hot, basically ready to go. We're seafood people here, like I said. These are mussels. In oil. In oil that we do here. Clams, same way. Clams, same way. So sweat them open, pull them out of the shell, and put them in oil. Exactly. These are these really great baby shrimp. They're super tender, really, really delicious. Squid? A little squid in there too. Essentially, all you want to do is just heat this through. 
because it's gonna keep cooking when we plate it. All right. Pour right in there. Hot, It'll start hot to- Hot pan in a hot pan. Hot pan in a hot pan. It'll start to crisp up on its own. Spread it out. Garnish it with just a little nice scallion right in the middle. Uh, these are beaten duck eggs. I like duck eggs because they're richer. You know, they have that unctuousness to them. And then we bring this out to the table and just pour it right over the top. The guest stirs it with their spoon. That kimchi is so spicy that like you need something to kind of be a, a natural foil for it. And then we just leave the spoon right in there and the guests serve themselves. Laurel, David Santos, brother. Bingo, you, bingo, brother. bingo. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Guy can cook. And the girls, ladies in the house, doing all the hot side here, all the hot side. And they do the desserts, too. That's it. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home. Lou's Naturals Family of Brands offers all-natural, minimally processed meats, free of antibiotics, hormones, and nitrites, from our family to yours. Imported from Italy, Anna Pasta is made from 100% Italian durum wheat semolina and pure spring water, slowly dried to cook al dente. Recipes online at cento.com.